Imagine, this somewhat mesmerizing and truly cosmic picture was obtained using ordinary natural numbers. That is, each point in this space corresponds to one of the numbers. To create a visualization of this map use the first 3 million natural numbers, and in this video let's find out how ordinary numbers can be represented in such an unusual way and what mathematical patterns are hidden here. This interesting way of representing numbers was proposed by John Williamson, a lecturer at Glasgow University. So all the credit goes to him and I suggest you read his article first, the link is in the description. But in this video we will reproduce the main idea of this article from the point of view of an ordinary person a little familiar with mathematics, and since on the channel we work with computer graphics, I will touch in detail the moments of implementation of 3D renderer to build an interactive visualization of the final result. So, we have three main steps to perform. These are decomposing natural numbers into prime factors and representing them into n-dimensional vectors. Then we use a machine learning algorithm to reduce their dimensionality to two or three dimensions, which in turn will allow us to visualize them. And now let us look at what should be done in the first step. Let us consider the 13 first natural numbers as rows, and their prime factors will form the columns of the table. And our task is to denote by units the presence of corresponding factors for each number. Thus, we get a two-dimensional array in which each number is represented by a binary vector. And as you see, to represent 13 numbers in this way we need a six-dimensional space, and imagine that for a million numbers we need a space of many thousands of dimensions. But now let's look at an example of implementing this step in Python. So, first of all, we need a function to determine if a number is prime. It is based on the fact that it is enough to check all divisors up to and including the square root of this number, and if the number is not divisible by any of them, then the number being checked is prime. We will also need a hash map of prime numbers for performance purposes. The hash map will serve two purposes, since the keys contain prime numbers, it takes constant time to check for occurrences, and the values store the column index for the resulting array. And there is correspondingly a function to factorize a composite number into prime factors. Here we iterate over prime factors and find all divisors of the number, and in order not to duplicate factors, we use a set data structure to store them. And finally, there is a function for filling the resulting array, here if the number is prime, then we put 1 in the corresponding column, otherwise we get its prime factors and also place the units according to the values of the factors. And if we run the program for the same 13 numbers, we will see that we will get correct 6-dimensional vectors. And thus we can say that we have completed the first stage, and let's now talk about dimensionality reduction algorithms. When we look at the results of our program, we will see a huge, sparse table of data. And for the vast majority of people, it is not possible to perceive such data, that is, it is practically impossible to see the overall picture, and we cannot accurately answer the question of whether there are any common features between the vectors that will allow them to be combined into groups or not. And if we touch on machine learning, then in this area they constantly work with multidimensional data, and in order to better perceive this data, dimensionality reduction algorithms are applied to it. As the name implies, these algorithms reduce dimensionality, or more precisely, they reduce the number of features in the data without any significant loss of information, which ultimately gives us the opportunity to visualize the result of these algorithms in 2D or 3D form. And in this project we will use an algorithm called Uniform Manifold Approximation and Projection for Dimension Reduction. This algorithm uses a graph layout technique to organize data in a low-dimensional space. In the simplest sense, it constructs a high-dimensional graph representation of the data then optimizes a low-dimensional graph to be as structurally similar as possible. In simple terms, this algorithm has proven itself in terms of performance and shows excellent results in grouping similar categories together, as well as better preserving the global structure of our data. So, we will apply this algorithm to the first million numbers, and instead of the NumPy array, we will use the sparse matrix from the SciPy module to save RAM. And as for the settings of the algorithm itself, there are actually a lot of them, and probably the most important parameter is the number of neighbors. Small values of this parameter allow us to see the local picture more clearly, and larger values allow us to see more of the global picture. And at the moment we reduce our dimensionality of vectors to 2, and in the end we will save the result as an image using the matplotlib module. A few moments later. And in the end we have a rather unexpected result, we got something akin to a cosmic picture, 
we see different patterns, some kind of loops, and we can say for sure that using the chosen form of representing numbers, natural numbers clearly have characteristics by which they form different clusters in groups in this image. And this picture of numbers is quite interesting, but I propose to go to the third dimension and carry out further analysis there, so let's figure out how to implement an interactive 3D renderer for this. And to begin with, we will reduce the dimensions of the vectors to 3, and in order not to run the UMAP algorithm every time, we will save the result as a NumPy array. So, to create a 3D renderer, modern OpenGL will be used, and the main part of the code in terms of initializing the OpenGL context, camera and management of both shaders and mesh has already been implemented. And at this stage we have a mesh of axes, if we run the program we will see rotating axes in the form of three orthogonal lines, and they will help us better perceive objects in 3D space. And if we look at the result of the UMAP algorithm, then we have a large set of 3D vectors, and each vector can be interpreted as the coordinates of a point in space, so let's assume that we have a cloud of points and we need to visualize them. Then in the data loading class we will receive our data and calculate the scaling factor for the axes, and also calculate the position of the center of our cloud in order to move these axes there. And based on this data, for the mesh of our points we form a vertex array, for rendering of which we need to specify that the primitive drawing mode will be in the form of points. And so in the vertex shader we get the position of the point, we also use a uniform buffer object, which has the necessary data for the projection and view matrices, and also has the data to implement the rotation of the points as is done with the axis. And in the fragment shader we will display the points in white for now. And so we were able to render our data in the form of points, and even using a single color to display them the whole picture looks quite fascinating, especially knowing that each point corresponds to a certain natural number. But the resulting picture can be further improved, in particular we can resize the points so that they become some object when we approach them. In the vertex shader, we can only change the size of the points if the corresponding OpenGL flag is enabled. And then we can set a certain maximum and minimum size, which will be calculated depending on the distance from the point to the camera. But in this case, instead of points, we will get quads, but quads can easily be turned into circles. To do this, in the fragment shader we can calculate the UV coordinate of the center of this quad and use the smooth step function to make a circle with a blurred edge. So now we have quite suitable objects for our visualization, and probably the final step will be to give some coloring to our objects. And the easiest way to color them is to take their coordinates as the color. And in this case, we already get a multicolored picture, it looks quite acceptable, but at the same time, many colors look quite faded and not expressive. Here you can do different things, but for example, you can create colors based on the hue saturation lightness model. And thus the colors became more saturated and better for the perception of this whole stunning picture. Well, these were the main points regarding the implementation of this 3D renderer, but now let's talk about what we still see here. Now in this visualization three colors are used, prime numbers are colored in white, even numbers are colored in green, and odd numbers are colored in red. And here we can safely conclude that all numbers are distributed into certain groups by their features, which speaks in favor of the correctness of the UMAP algorithm. Especially standout prime numbers, they form a spherical cluster. And in fact, each prime number is an orthogonal basis for the initial multidimensional space. And as you remember these data were obtained with such an initial parameter as the number of neighbors equal to 15. Now there are 1 million numbers with a value of this parameter equal to 3, and as we see, the result of the algorithm has worsened, but some clustering of numbers can still be traced, and the picture itself looks like the early stage of the universe after the Big Bang. As you remember, for initial vectors we noted only the presence of prime factors, and obviously this led to the fact that multiple numbers had the same features. But what will happen if we make each vector unique and indicate the number of these factors? And despite the fact that each vector is now unique, we still get a clear clustering of numbers by features. And with my approach, this picture is in some way reminiscent of the previous one, but it seems to me that there are much fewer noise fluctuations in it. And we can also appreciate the beauty of such a map in color, but frankly speaking, I prefer the visualization of numbers using the previous approach, since it is more reminiscent of the landscapes of the universe. So no matter how it is, we have built a map of natural numbers, and the link to the source code is in the description. And so you can experiment on your own, find interesting setups and I always welcome your comments.